I'm David, and this is Andrew. At Import.io, we enable anybody to go to a website and turn the content into an API. And you don't have to be a developer to do it. Let me tell you more. When people look at the web, they don't see data. They see web pages. But the data's there. It's just trapped, trapped inside the HTML of the page. Now, this data is valuable. If we could release it, well, the impact would be huge. It would help you make better informed decisions at work, ensure you had the information to hold your government accountable, and even make sure you got home safely after a good night out. Currently, this data is not available to everyone. The majority of sites do not have an API, and creating one is complex. That's why today, web data is the domain of organizations, organizations that can employ developers to write code, build systems, and publish apps. But imagine if you could turn any website into a table of data or an API in a matter of minutes without writing code. For the first time ever, data on the web would be easily accessible to everyone representing a significant step forward in information accessibility. Andrew's going to show you how this works. Let's imagine that I want to monitor tech companies for new job vacancies. Perhaps I'm a recruitment consultant, or maybe I just want to keep an eye on what my competitors are doing. I'm going to need an API for every single website. To create an API, I open the Import.io data browser, navigate to a web page that has the data on it that I want, and click the I.O. button. I start by showing the data browser an example row of data. I add another one, and it generalizes from these examples to learn where all the rows are on the page. I do the same thing for columns. Show it an example column value, and it extracts straight into the table. And with a couple of clicks, I've turned a web page into a table of data. This extraction pattern is now available as an API on our cloud platform, allowing me to pull live data straight from the website. And this works at scale. Combining the API that I just created with other APIs is very easy. I simply choose the ones I want, and I now have jobs data from hundreds of company websites streaming straight into my application over a single API call. We launched the data browser on the 9th of September. We have 8,000 users. Those users have created 15,000 APIs, and those APIs have been used to structure 65 million web pages. It's all free at the moment, and there will always be a free version. I'd like to take you through a couple of examples now of how Import.io is being used today. The British Red Cross wanted an iPhone application with hospital data from the National Health Service. The NHS have a website with this data on it, but there is no API. Using Import.io, it took only a couple of minutes to create an API for that website, and now, in their iPhone application, the British Red Cross have live hospital data. Another example, Hewlett Packard's laptop division wanted to monitor the prices that its partners were selling their laptops for in order to be aware of any unauthorized discounting. This is a huge problem that uh, plagues that industry. Using Import.io, APIs were created to 50 partner websites, and now HP have live price data in a single spreadsheet. Nice and easy. Thank you, Andrew. Our users love using this tool. We love using this tool. And in using it, we created an extensive library of APIs to some amazing websites. So we thought, what if? What if everyone could get access to APIs that we built? So today, we are launching the Data Factory. If, um, the Data Factory is a Chrome extension that will allow anybody to get access to our library of APIs or request that one be built. It's simple. Navigate to a site. If we have an API available, Owen the data owl will have a number next to him. 
you can see we have an API for this TV listing site. Click on the link and instantly the data is extracted from the site, formatted and placed into a table. From here, you could use it in Excel, Google Docs, or if you wish, integrate the API and get live data on the site. To launch, we are releasing 1,000 APIs. In the past 13 years, there have only been 10,000 publicly available APIs created. In the next three months, Import.io will double that number. We believe in a future where every website has an API. So if you need data, join us. Download our browser to create your own APIs, install our Chrome extension to get access to ones we've created. With Import.io making data this simple to use, we can finally begin to open the web and release the full potential of the data inside it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Import. Fantastic, okay. So, turning the web into an API, judges. Yeah, it sounds like you guys are really onto something and I've struck a chord here. Um, you know, the whole idea of the democratization of data and developer tools. Who are kind of your ideal customers that you guys are targeting here? So, our customers range from an owner operator running a yoga studio in New York, all the way up to a quant sitting in a bank. But there is a commonality amongst them. And the commonality is, first of all, their need for data off the web. Secondly, the tools they tend to use. And finally, how they go about solving that problem. So while it is quite a broad market, and while the job titles and the people change a lot, there's a lot of commonality between them. So we think it's an addressable market. I just want to ask a couple of clarification questions. Uh, you say you uh, build APIs, but effectively you are scraping as a service. You don't have an ability to, to write into, uh, into the back to the API, right? Sorry. So, can you repeat the question? You, you're scraping. effectively scraping as a service. You're not okay. building APIs. You're, it's a read-only API if you do call it an API, right? Obviously, you can't write back so we, to a site that you don't have permission to. So, anything you can do in a web browser, you can program using the service. Okay. So, what I showed on the demonstration was me pulling data from a website. Um, if you visit the website, you can also see that we, we can actually post as well. So we have two things. We have extracting data from a website, and we have also that. what we call oh, like HT, recording yeah. and playback. Okay. So anything you can do as a web in a web browser, you can read and you can write. Okay. Got it. Um, the British Red Cross, how much are they paying you? Um, today the service is free. How much will they be paying you? <laughs> So, how much are you attending to charge them? We have a, our, our business model will be a freemium model. And what we're doing at the moment is we're working with the, the users we're acquiring to understand how that's going to split up. So, we have a bunch of free users. We will have a bunch of users that would fit in what I would call a credit card size transaction. And then we clearly have people on the opposite end of that. We've got some customers wanting to monitor 500,000 websites, and that will be a bespoke payment plan. Do you, you, do you envision that companies that would spend the time creating APIs will now just say, you know what, we've got Import.io to do this for us, or you know, what's your vision for the world so far who's been creating their own APIs? We've already seen this. We've had our, our first uh, website come to us and say, um, how do I get an API from you guys? And we said, well, download the browser and you can create one in under four minutes. So certainly we do see that sites that want to um, get an API, and maybe it's not their core business. You know, uh, certainly if you were trying to do Twitter volumes or LinkedIn volumes with this API, it wouldn't be suitable. But if you've got content on your site and you want a different distribution channel, you want to open it up maybe for developers to get access to it, or you just wanted to have a, an alternative distribution channel, this is certainly an alternative. And we've already started to see sites being very keen to have one of these APIs created. And obviously it's self-service, so they can do that very easily. What are you doing with the million that you've raised? What are you spending it on? Sorry. The, the million you raised, what are you going to use it for? OK, so essentially that's all been about building the team up, building an engineering side of the team, and also starting to expand out in our user acquisition um, channels. So for example, we're doing a big push, push on content-driven marketing at the moment, PPC, etc., all to start acquiring customers 
now that we've got the technology out into beta. You just, you just threw the entire kitchen sink of marketing at us. I think, well, to a certain uh, extent, is, they're all channels we well, use, is, This they? is my favorite question I ask founders uh, in interviews at AngelPad. Why do you think has this not done before? Or if it has, why was it not successful? This is not something that could have not been done in 2002 already. There have been tools before that allow you to turn a single website into like a static file, a static data file. Um, I guess we're taking a sort of slightly different approach to it. Um, there have been tools before that have done similar things, but they've always been focused on a single website and they've been largely technical as well. The difference with what we're doing is um, it's very easy to use. You don't have to be technical to do it. It creates an API because we've got the sync between the tool, uh, the kind of the browser on the desktop and the cloud platform. You've got a live API immediately. And most importantly, we're designed from the ground up to be able to address many websites at once rather than just single websites. Just to take the timing part of your question, I think the time is an interesting one. I think for the first time ever, um, my example of an owner operator running a yoga studio in New York is aware of data. So that's another issue that we've seen that there's just more familiarity with the benefits of data. You, you don't have to answer do. this, but giving me the yoga instructor in New York as an example is probably the worst pitch you can do because he will never pay you any money. But there are people that will pay you money for sure, like the Red Cross. Um, is there an option for organizations to opt out of this? So, for example, there will be certain organizations That's a revenue model. who, exactly, um, who um, believe, not like us, that all data is free and therefore it's wonderful and we should share it everywhere. Uh, and the one that springs to mind is something like the Football Association in the UK, which believes that the data that it has is it's theirs and they license it to other people. How do you prevent being taken up to court by potentially plagiarizing the availability of data? I think there's two, uh, there's two parts to my answer. The first part is if somebody doesn't want to have an API bill, they simply contact the Hello Import IO and we will stop that. But have there's you just not given me a Chrome extension which allows me to do that? Uh, no, the Chrome extension allows us to create ones and publish them to you. Right. And the uh, second part is um, that we act as a pipe. You know, we're simply moving the data from one place to another. We don't store the data. We're simply doing that transaction. So if somebody is misappropriating the data, the terms of service issue is very much with the end user. Great. Thank you very much, Imports.io. Excellent pitch.